good to hold my phone that way. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Well, good afternoon, everyone, as we come to you from the studios of Frito Nation. Uh, Mark Friedman, uh, of course, Productions, he's been helping us out with all these great interviews uh, we've been doing with uh, coaches and players and in, in, uh, local people of interest here in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, joining us today, I can proudly say the 2019-2020 ECHL GM of the Year, Mr. Steve Martinson. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it. Now, what a great honor for you. And, and I thought your quote was, was, was dead on, uh, talking about how during a season, uh, depending on how your roster looks from start to end, it can really change and affect how you, you perform in the playoffs. Well, you know, it's, it, you have to, first of all, you got to be good enough. And that's one of the things I said, you know, when, when you look at your team, you know, I always say, are we good enough to win it? Because even if you get in the playoffs with injuries and, you know, and, and you don't lose players to call-ups during, in, you know, during the playoffs, but during the regular season, you know, you're always, you've got your own affiliate that, you know, that's taking players and then you've got, you know, you're loaning players to other teams and then injuries. And there's, there's a lot that goes in. You know, we've lost good players to Europe uh, over the years, and that's what I was saying. I think the coaches, are, they, they all get it and understand that, you know, a lot of factors go into, you you know, to you being able to have success. So, um, and then, you obviously, you got to have good players, and they got to be playing well. Where does this award rank up there? And you've had so many of them over the years, uh, and, and especially the championship, which, which is the best reward you can get. Uh, but where does this rank up there in, in your or on your resume? Well, like I said, because it's voted by the coaches, um, you know, you, you always feel good about things when when it's your peers that that voted. So um, where it ranks, I don't, you know, I mean, I like I said, I mean, I'm always usually my, you know, I'm always looking at, like I said, I look at our team and and it, you know whether we're good enough or not, and then if you're not good enough to start, you're working on on fixing it. So. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I feel good about the job that we did this year. And, you know, I think last year, I, I, I get tired of talking about last year, but, you know, I've never gone through a stretch where you lose that many players in the first two weeks of the season. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's never the players that <laughs> you don't mind being hurt. It's always the good ones. One of the best turnarounds in ECHL history. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment right there in its own, uh, considering the fact there are 27 other teams in the league that would have something to say about that. But um, you have to, first of all, you have to have the right chemistry in the room. Uh, it's not sometimes always about numbers, but you have to have the right group of guys together. And I think the one thing that everybody agreed on this year is, man, uh, these guys, uh, they played for each other. They played hard and uh, they played to win. Yeah, you know, I think this year, you know, we had a lot of offensive guys. And and, you know, most of the players that we, we have here are top offensive players, whether it was last year or this year. Um, but I think that they, got, they liked each other this year. And I think one of the things we're looking for is, is making sure that we had, you know, good balanced players and, and, and obviously talented. But, the, you know, the, 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 it's easier to have chemistry if you don't have holes. And it's easier to get along with each other if you have a bunch of good guys. And I think that, you know, that's something you'd have to talk to them. But, you know, I get the feedback from the players this year that they, they like the group. And, you know, when I was looking at down the stretch, I've made trades in the past, picked up players. And, and at the trade deadline, I said, you know what, I'm going to keep going with the guys that we have. I mean, I, I, I believe that we have the core that can win it. And obviously, you know, getting guys like, you know, Lancaster, Ott and Bright, you know, possibly register. And then Doty and, and Gagne was, you know, Gagne would call me and say, hey, look, if, if I didn't make, you know, if Rockford doesn't make it, can you put me on? Can you imagine that he's the leading goal scorer in the league and he's saying, can you put me on the playoff roster? So that kind of tells you the character of the guys and, and that makes it a lot easier team to coach. I know we've talked about this before, but since it is uh, GM of the Year award day, um, what's the best moment that stands out to you from 1920? Oh, man, I, you know. I don't think there's any one individual moment, but, you know, you look at, we had a lot of guys that had, you know, their best numbers. And I think, you know, we take pride in that in, in our organization that I always tell players stats get you noticed when you're, it's your ability to play without the puck that keeps you there. And, you know, you look through our roster and, and so many point of game guys, defensemen that had their, you know, like Jack Sadick, 
You know, yeah. he had his best offensive year. Um, and it's hard to believe they didn't play it. You know, he didn't play any power play at, 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 Man at, at St. Um, excuse me, at St. At University of Minnesota. But I take a lot of pride in a lot of guys came here and, and put up good numbers. And, you know, most of the guys got a pretty good opportunity, got loaned to different places. Some guys maybe not ready yet and will get chances next year. And then, you know, I mean, you look at Alex Breton, uh, defenseman of the year. It was tough that he didn't get that opportunity. And, and, you know, when you look at stuff like that, it's frustrating, you know, but in, in he was under contract to Iowa. And when, you know, they, they had Ott and Bright was up at the rookie camp too. And it seemed every time they needed a defenseman at the left shot, it was uh, their physical defenseman that had gotten hurt and they liked to replace with, with light guys. So I think for the most part, you know, the team had a great year um, as, a, as a team and, and individually too. Well, uh, so many times you could have won this award and coach of the year for that matter. It's nice to see you get recognized for all the hard work and, and a great job of recruiting is because you've said many times and, and, you know, Barry said it in his blog. It's not easy to recruit at this level. It's not like, you know, you've got, uh, you can offer big money like they can, can in the NHL to lure people here. So it's, you know, it's all about uh, selling what we have and what we've done in the past and uh, kudos and great job on that. Thanks, Tommy. All right, that's the ECHL GM of the Year just announced today, Allen American's head coach, Steve Martinson.